Thank you. My name is Memo Doklic. Um, I was just remarking to our new dean that uh, 16 years ago, uh, it was me and Mike Dunn and a secretary in Memorial Union on the uh, south side of campus. And within that uh, modest amount of time, it's evolved into a remarkable um, uh, uh, product where we're bringing together so many different people across so many different disciplines. Uh, big data, bigger reach. So I work uh, in, on uh, basically a fork. One side is trying to improve existing algorithms so they'll actually scale without uh, necessarily HPC. Uh, and then I like to apply this to various areas. So I have, these are some uh, internal people that I'm working with. So I wanted to be a little bit religious and, and uh, put an image of uh, grasping for the big data. And when I committed this, I decided I, I really wasn't comfortable figuring out which side big data is on. But we have some kind of theme that there's something going on. So these are three illustrative projects of applications of big data that we're currently working on. One is uh, coral, uh, coral with respect to climate. We just gave a symposium in Hawaii. Uh, what we're doing is making available and doing analysis over the approximately 70 million data points that have been taken in the last 40 years. Up till now, it's very difficult for scientists to use all of this data. Uh, second one is uh, studying the Milky Way. What we did was uh, improve k-means by adding some uh, uh, structures that allowed uh, effective clustering, and we got a publication in computational astronomy. I, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, we had a, a PhD student in astronomy uh, working with us, but uh, uh, what we were able to show is that uh, you can indeed uh, get some more mileage out of these older algorithms if you're uh, thoughtful. And then the last one is probably one of the most interesting uh, from the perspective of, of applying uh, big data uh, to yourself, right, the cobbler. So uh, this summer, uh, IU's bus transport system is leveraging our analysis and work on IU's bus system. There's a transponder on each bus that emits a, a signal every two seconds. And uh, it was uh, our group's idea that perhaps if we could look at the data, uh, we could figure out how to improve what they're doing. And they're taking a chance with us right now. Uh, they hired two students over the summer, and one of my PhD students is working for them right now. So you can actually make big data uh, work for you. Uh, so these are some of the publications with uh, uh, Lou in um, Indianapolis. We have a, a NCI grant on big data for cancer, but uh, we don't have any products from that quite yet. But I wanted to show sort of the breadth of, of what I'm interested in and work on, so from geosciences to this is more of a, a theoretical demonstration, however, uh, what we did was actually implement this and show that EM itself can be vastly improved uh, um, if you give some thoughtful um, uh, analysis to uh, how the algorithms work. I've taught two classes today, so I'm a little bit haggard, so forgive me. So uh, what is big data? I, I think you're seeing a, a wide, wide range here for me. It's uh, not necessarily just looking at the big data for its sake. It's, uh, I think, an important element of actionability, if I can uh, take that word. And here, uh, what we're doing is showing that even at IU, we can make some of the big data talk. Uh, it's a pretty exciting area. I think it's going to be here for a long time. I think it challenges some conventional notions of culture, because you have data that you have to check to see if it's consistent with what you believe is going on. And uh, in the sciences, I think it's changing a bit of the paradigm, too. Instead of hypothesis-driven, we have uh, data-driven, and we can uh, uh, discover and verify relationships that perhaps we hadn't have thought of. I think I'm done. Thank you so much.